So Mike Pence, Chris Christie running for president. That's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please like the video. There I am. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, Mike Pence, we knew he was going to run. Um, does he really think he can win? I feel like these people are just running to get those donations in. I'm not clear on what they can do with the dona donations if they don't win or if they don't run or if they don't use them. That's just not clear to me. And then also Chris Christie. What's going on with him? Why does he think he can win the presidency? And aren't the more people that entering the run in the Republican side making it easier for Donald to run? So probably three draws. We'll see how it goes. It's very interesting to think about all these Republicans who, I mean, I looked at a list, I looked up this this morning, um, a list of who were the likely people who are gonna run in this uh, next campaign, uh, Democrats and Republicans. And you can just Google that, likely presidential candidates 2024, just tuck that into your Google and you'll get a whole long list of uh, uh, confirmed, uh, uh, expected to confirm uh, likelies and then also um, rumored. The rumored, I don't even pay attention to, but these were like the top two uh, that came to my mind anyway, uh, Mike Pence and Chris Christie. You have to think, Mike Pence, why does he feel like he can win? Does he even think he can win or is he just in it to get those donations because maybe he can do something with those otherwise that's what i want to know and then almost the same thing with chris christie but before we do any of that of course we need to have just a moment of meditation So let me turn the volume down on my phone, which I certainly should have done that before I connected with you guys. Hopefully that did it. And uh, so let's see, Mike Pence, Mike Pence. You know, I'm not on the side of the Republicans. If there were a Republican that I felt, I, I think I could vote for Liz Cheney. I think I could. Um, but so if there were, but it wouldn't be my preferred vote. Um, but uh, Mike Pence is not the guy who I think I could vote for. Mike Pence isn't the guy who, if the president couldn't keep his, his job, uh, died in office or whatever, that I'd hope he would be the vice president. Not even close. I would even want Mike Pence to be the governor, the mayor, or any official in a city where I love, live. But let's do Mike Pence. What do the cards think? We'll do three cards and then we'll do six cards on Mike Pence. What do the cards think about him in this presidential election? Three cards. Oh, these two are stuck together, but I'm not gonna take them. One, two, and three. Mike Pence, what do the cards have to say about his candidacy in general? Let's see what we've got here. First card, the Emperor. This is very interesting to get. I can't imagine how this refers to Mike Pence. It's a major arcana. It's number four in the Fool's Journey as he starts out to learn uh, about life. Uh, the Emperor is all-knowing, all-controlling. Uh, what the Emperor says goes. And the Emperor makes a choice. Uh, this is the guy who's going to lead the way. And how this comes up for Mike Pence's potential uh, run, I'm not sure. So let's leave that for a moment. The next card for Mike Pence, presidency. Okay, this is the four of coins. The coins are value, are um, 
worth, sometimes they're money, but I think we're talking about value here. Maybe we're talking about money because I was asking if he's just wanting to get those donations. So the four of cards is holding on to your value, not letting it slip away, being very cautious about that. Um, this could be Mike Pence wanting to hold on to his political value, make himself still relevant in the political realm. It could also, because it's coins, be talking about donations that he might receive uh, as a presidential candidate. So let's keep that in mind. Then the last card for Pence's presidency run is the King of Wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The King is the master of those plans. He, what he says is going to go. So I think this is clearly, this is Mike Pence saying, my plan is to run for president. I want to shore up my value. I wonder if he doesn't see himself as the emperor, but one thing that strikes me about this emperor here is he's kind of looking up into space. He seems a little pensive, Mike Pence, and uh, he seems as if he's not sure about this uh, last, uh, this order that he's about to give here. So I wonder if as emperor, as president, Pence doesn't show a lot of hesitancy. He's trying to hold on to his value. I think he's trying to collect donations and he's trying to hold on to his political relevance. And then he is the king of those plans. He's not going to give up on this. He's gonna run it until it doesn't run anymore. And maybe he's thinking just by being in the game, he might get picked as someone's vice president. Who knows? But maybe we'll uh, leave that for this six card draw that I'm gonna do on Mike Pence right now. So six cards for Mike Pence's journey as the uh, running for the Republican um, uh, nominee. Let's see if um, I'm going to do six cards, maybe ten, and make it a full Celtic cross, but we'll see. The six cards are going to be, will he get Mike Pence, will he get the Republican nomination? Six cards. Again, these cards are sticking together. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Mike Pence, will he even get the Republican nomination? Sometimes the cards tell more story than I ask, or sometimes a completely different story. But let's see what they say here. The signifier card, Mike Pence, um, will he get the nomination on the Republican side? The Hermit. This is very interesting. You know, you don't think of the Hermit as someone being outgoing, and they think of them being introspective and being careful about how they walk. That is who Mike Pence is. I have never encountered a politician who's more careful about the very next move they make. He's, it's, it's infuriating to me. But the Hermit is a signifier in this card. I think this is saying this is who Mike Pence is. He's really studying um, every inch of every move he might make. The challenge to that then, will he get the Republican nomination? is the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands is very interesting because it's talking about, uh, well, you know, let me get a better, a clearer definition from my cheat sheet, which I always keep handy. Seven of Wands, Seven of Wands is defense, holding firm, valor, advantage, determination. So yeah, that's, that, this is usually depicted by a fellow up on a cliff top with a wand in his hand and he's fending off six wands that are poking up from the bottom of the cliff top in the normal right away deck. And in this case, this guy's really uh, cuddling this lamb. He's, uh, you know, showing his his uh, willingness to, uh, you know, make this move. So the challenge to this kind of pensive, thoughtful, the hermit Mike Pence is uh, fighting off those issues coming up and trying to take care of this innocent lamb. I don't know. Let's see if this makes more sense as I get further in the read. So now the base of this whole thing, again, the card is repeated, Emperor. I love when the cards repeat in a draw because it tells me that the cards know that I'm interpreting this card in a certain way and it's, they're willing to use it again because they know how I'm going to interpret it. So I called this, pen, this uh, Emperor in the first three card draw uh, that it could be Mike Pence really thinking about his move. He is sort of the emperor of his destiny. He does make some very definite decisions about what he's going to do. I just don't think they're always the best decisions. But that's the baseline of this, is that no one's going to change his mind. He's going to do what he says he's going to do. Emperors are not always making the best decisions. Sometimes, like Nero, they're letting the, uh, the city burn down around him. In the past of this reading, Mike Pence, um, and will he even get the nomination? This is a Wheel of Fortune but it's in the past. The Wheel of Fortune is a major arcana. It's number 10, about halfway through the Fool's Journey. Uh, and 
what this tells me with this wheel of fortune being in the past is that his good luck is probably already behind him in the sky this reading is death well yes it is death it is is it usually death but it usually means a complete end to a cycle and i think since this is in the sky and we're asking if he's going to get the nomination this is telling me no it's not going anywhere but the final outcome on whether he will get the nomination is strength he is willing to push forward um so i think he's going to gain some gain some advantage by uh, pushing through with this um, and I think these are all the cards I'm going to draw on this subject. Uh, six cards, Mike Pence. He is the hermit. He's very thoughtful, pensive. Um, he, the challenge to that is wanting to protect that little lamb. And I have to think this is kind of really his family. He's wanting to protect his family, but he's not willing to go out and get a job. So he's going to try to run for another political uh, stint, stint and maybe hopeful that someone will pick him to be in their cabinet or be a vice president. The basis of that whole reading for Mike Pence is the emperor is that he is the one making the decisions in his campaign and nobody's going to change his mind. The uh, past is the wheel of fortune. His good luck is in the past and in the sky is the death card which isn't really death but I think it means it's the death of his uh, run for presidency. He won't get the nomination. And then strength is just what he's made of. He is willing to submit himself to as we know, untold humiliation just to keep getting a paycheck. So that's what I got for Mike Pence and his run. Now we're going to talk about Chris Christie. So Chris Christie, okay, he is a very savvy political player. Okay, he's done some good things for his home state. He has uh, been in this political game as his major career forever. Um, like all of these politicians, he was a lawyer. I think Pence is also a lawyer. I can't imagine hiring Pence. I could imagine hiring Christie to defend me. Um, I, if Christie won the Republican nomination and somehow beat the Democrat uh, nominee and won the presidency, I wouldn't be so scared about the future of the country. You know what I mean? If, if it was Trump, I would be terrified. I'd probably move to another country. Honestly, I'm not kidding you. That's, that's seriously been in my consideration for, for years. Um, if uh, Christie uh, were to win the presidency, I would feel like he's running it in a knowledgeable, thoughtful way, although, of course, leaning towards his very conservative values. And you have to remember that at the last minute when Donald Trump won and he had no plan for taking over the presidency, he never thought he won. It was always a ploy to up his profile and then he won and they had no plan to take over. Christie is the one who in the last minute jumped in there and got his presidency uh, kind of moving, although it never was good. So Chris Christie, three cards for this nomination for the Republican Party. I guess kind of see will he get it or how will that go. So Chris Christie, in the nomination phase of the Republicans choosing their candidate, what can these three cards tell us about that? That's what I want to know for this. Okay, so the first card up is Swords. So this is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords, and I'm going to look it up again just because I want to get some variation on my on my interpretation. So the Seven of Swords, Betrayal, Strategy, Bad Luck, Espionage, Obstacles. Yeah. <coughs> it's nothing good. <coughs> Excuse me for the cough. We got pollen uh, bursting out in season here in Seattle, and so that's what I'm responding to. But the Seven of Swords, yeah, this is truth, justice, rules, and law, but with lots of issues, and it's the signifier of Chris Christie getting the Republican nominee. The next card up is the Three of Swords, which again, truth, justice, rules, and law, but the Three of Swords is a broken heart really so I think it's telling us no he's not gonna get that nomination either and then the final look at that the same thing as Mike Pence fending off uh, those issues that are surrounding you and uh, so yeah for Chris Christie uh, will he get the nomination well the seven of swords puts him in a, a very difficult situation as far as truth justice rules and law the three of swords is a broken heart which I think is what's telling me no he's not gonna get it and then the Seven of Wands, again, all the issues that he's been involved with over the last few years, over the Trump presidency, after Trump was out, and he, no, he's not going to get it. But let's do six cards just to talk about that journey that he's going to take um, 
Okay, so the journey that Christie's going to take in this uh, run as uh, trying to win the Republican uh, nomination. And remember, all these people, many times the reason they're running, again, is to fill up their coffers with donations. And again, I'm not sure how it is they're able to use that money, but if there's a way that they figured out they can benefit from it, all of them have done that, Democrats included. And, um, and perhaps, again, he's looking for a cabinet position or vice presidential position, which either one of those, I wouldn't feel terrible uh, if uh, he was chosen or something like that. But we'll do six cards just to see what this can tell us uh, about Chris Christie in this um, 2024 situation and uh, see what uh, knowledge the cards can glean for us. So Chris Christie in this 2024 run, what can the cards uh, clue in for us on that regard? The signifier card is, look at that, the emperor again. And the signifier is Chris Christie. Wow, he has really considered this, his decision, He's going forward, he knows what he wants to do, and he's gonna do it. The challenge to this card is the King of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. So the challenge to Chris Christie's steadfast decision to that this is a good move for him is this King of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law is what's gonna stand in his way. The basis of this uh, reading then for Chris Christie in this uh, Republican nomination uh, scrum is uh, this is the page of wands. Remember, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and the page is the very least effective of the royal card. So this is the guy who brings something to court and says, well, mm, court, king, queen, courtiers, this is what's uh, been landed on my plate. Maybe you can do something with this. So he's a messenger. He's a messenger. And the basis of this whole reading for Chris Christie and his Republican uh, uh, run for, uh, for the nomination on the Republican side is that he's bringing forth messages. Perhaps the Republican Party has gotten behind Chris Christie and said, come on, run and promote our agenda. The past of this reading is justice. Justice is well in the past. What does that mean? I think justice for anything Christie may have done untoward uh, when uh, Trump was in office, that's in the past. Any justice for Christie, if there were any to be had, is, 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 is the thing of the past. It's not an issue anymore. In the sky of this reading for Chris Christie, we have the king of coins. It's about the money. Coins are value or money. King of coins, completely in charge of his, his value, his money. The whole reason he's doing this is to strengthen his political coffers. He is going to continue his political career on forward. And somehow that money they, they collect when they're dealing in politics, I think is useful to them in many, many ways. And the final outcome for Chris Christie, trying to get that Republican nomination, is this Queen of Cups. Cups are emotion, compassion, heartfelt situation. You can think of cups like a heart, like a queen of hearts. What does this say to me? There's a feminine energy to Chris Christie's um, run or, or, or thought process about politics. There is a caring, um, thoughtful, uh, element in there to him. You know, the, the gender of the card doesn't always have to correspond to the gender of the person that you're reading about. So yeah, so um, as an emperor, he's made the decision, he's thought it out, he's not going to back down, it's all going to be useful to him no matter how it turns out. The uh, King of Swords, this is truth, justice, rules, and law, and that's, what it, that's what's going to keep him from moving too far forward, uh, just karma. The basis of this with this page of wands, I think this is who Christie's going to be. He's going to be the messenger bringing forth the Republican agenda, getting it out there. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Republican Party got behind Christie and said, go ahead and run, promote our uh, talking points, and um, you'll get a bunch of money in your coffers. And uh, there'll probably be something for you to do politically in the future. That's what I think. That's what this messenger kind of reveals to me. In the past of this, justice for Christie is gone. Anything that he did that wasn't right, that's over with. He's, his karma is moving on. And But in the sky of this, with this king of coins, yeah, he's in it for the money and the value that this run would bring him, which is exactly what Trump had in mind and by craziness he won. It surprised him too. And then the final outcome is that feminine, caring energy that I believe Christie has, whether you believe or trust in his theories or his uh, political uh, ideas or not, I think that's what he brings to it, some sort of legitimacy. So 
for all those reasons, those are the readings for Mike Pence and Chris Christie. That was very interesting. I didn't expect that to come out this way. So, you know, if you don't agree with me, you always hear me tell you, tell me in the comments what you think about what I said. What do you think the cards mean? And let me know what you want to read about because I'll read about that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hey. So this is the Revival Art Tarot by Turaco. Turaco or Turacho? I'm not sure. Studios. Uh, this is a deck that comes to me somehow, I think, from Russia via Norway. But um, they're beautiful cards. They were a little pricey, and um, but I love to use them. They're lots of art. The guidebook that comes with them, Revival Art Guidebook, is, um, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. You know, you can't really read it. It's tiny, tiny print. But on the uh, upside, there's nothing in here that's particularly um, earth shattering as far as how to use the cards for divination. So, you know, no loss that it's a bad uh, guidebook. However, the cards are just amazing. And uh, the art goes right to the edge on these cards. They're really beautiful and I love using them. And uh, you know, I do this to sort of sort of mix up the cards and to give folks who don't uh, purchase tarot cards or look at uh, full decks of tarot cards very often, the chance to see, you know, more of what the deck looks like. Otherwise, you just kind of see the first few, uh, the first, the only the cards that are uh, dealt or that are turned over. So there you go. Uh, that's this uh, Taracho Revival Art Studio uh, deck. And I think they're beautiful and I love using them. Um, they're pretty, pretty cool. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So ciao for now.